again in this very important topic really <clears throat> the great role of critical care ultrasound in the management of pulmonary embolism uh, and we will see in this project really a lot of tricks in critical care ultrasound a 46 year old female patient not known to have any medical illness apart from uterine fibroid complained of gradually progressive course of shorts of breath over three weeks she was admitted to our unit because of uterine bleeding and anemia, hemoglobin 7.5 and dyspnea. Uh, heart rate 100 per minute, blood pressure 120, 75, auto saturation 92.6 liter face mask, heart examination S1, S2, chest examination scattered bronchi. We started by critical care ultrasound, okay? Uh, as you all of you know, I usually start the critical care ultrasound by inferior vena cava. <coughs> I look for the inferior vena cava. It is uh, elephant inferior vena cava, markedly dilated, 2.8, and none collapsing at all. Really, with personal experience, if you see this type of inferior vena cava, which exceeds 2.5 centimeter in diameter and not collapsing at all, think of cardiac cause. Go to the heart. The problem will be there because this type of markedly dilated inferior vena cava is usually, with clinical experience, with my experience, is usually going with cardiogenic cause. And this patient has short of breath gradually increased over three weeks. She is only 46 years old and ha has no risk factor for cardiac disease. This is a, a four-chamber view with some cut in five-chamber view. You see ballooning of the right side, markedly dilated right ventricle, and compressing the left ventricle, markedly dilated right atrium, compressing left atrium. As you see, this type of uh, right ventricle really is impressive, and it's markedly dilated because Usually, right ventricle is 60% of the left ventricle in uh, volume in diameter. But if you see the right ventricle exceeding the volume of the left ventricle, this is markedly dilated. Uh, usually, if you see the right ventricle, look for this lateral tricuspid valve annulus movement up and down because main contraction of the right ventricle is upward and downward movement from the base to the apex here okay you see really it is contracting well what's causing this dilated right ventricle but it's also contracting seem to be contracting well what's causing this dilatation let us see what's going on it is a uh, uh, diameter is 5.4 and normal it's up to 4.1 centimeter in the basal diameter uh, in the diastolic but if you see the right ventricle more than left ventricle in diameter and in size it is markedly dilated we did tapsy try to know how far is moving the lateral tricuspid valve annulus really it is moving well here it is more than uh, 17 milli 1.7 centimeters that means it's normal tapsy Uh, if you see normal tapsy with dilated right ventricle, uh, that means this right ventricle is compensated. Uh, you should assess the wall sickness of the right ventricle because wall sickness is the corner store here in management. If you see with the subcostal view, if you see the right ventricular wall is sickening like that, and when I measure the sickness, it is 9.9 .9 milli, normally up to 5 milli. That means this right ventricle has time to compensate for pressure overload and develop uh, muscles, increase muscle sickness. And this increased muscle sickness is a part of compensation, which lead to normal function and the tapsy is normal in this situation. It's very important in management. That means you are facing a right ventricular pressure overload, which is 
sub-acute and our patient complained since three weeks so she had time she had time to compensate for that it's very important or could be another cause of uh, pressure overload which lead to this uh, dilated right side let us see but this sequence usually with acute pulmonary embolism you will see dilated right ventricle and right ventricular failure you will see the tapsy is very poor and you will see the wall is normal in sickness this is a parasternal long axis view you see sick uh, wall uh, of the septum but the contraction seem to be good right side is dilated here also the m mood ejection fraction is 63 is normal and the ventricular septum is 13.5 so could it be could it be a diastolic dysfunction with a back pressure through increased left atrial pressure back pressure to the pulmonary circulation so left side uh, uh, diastolic failure lead to pulmonary hypertension by increasing left atrial pressure increase the pulmonary congestion and this would be reflected on the pulmonary capillary and lead to pulmonary hypertension this time course of three weeks is not going with this scenario because this scenario really left side uh, heart failure or valve lesion which lead to pulmonary hypertension need very long time but let us see if the left side is the cause of pulmonary hypertension and right side dilatation so at least you need to see advanced grade of the solid dysfunction is it the case when i put the pulsed wave doppler here at the tip of mitral valve i saw very low e wave compared to the a wave E wave is 40 centimeter per second and the EA ratio is 0.6 that means it's only grade 1 diastolic dysfunction grade 1 diastolic dysfunction usually there is normal or low left atrial pressure that means the problem is not in the left side okay and the valve lesion also in this patient was uh, intact so probably this is not the left side lesion lead to pulmonary hypertension and dilated side this is pressure overload of the right uh, ventricle you see here <coughs> in the short axis parasternal view parasternal short axis view at the level of the papillary muscle you will see here dilated right side and compressing the septum of the uh, left ventricle here and you see the left ventricle is d-shaped during d-shaped during systole but regain the circular appearance in diastole that means this is a pressure overload the right ventricle has pressure overload okay right. let us see this is the uh, 2019 guidelines of acute pulmonary embolism uh, of the european society of cardiology they give really a very important diagram here this is all the sign you expect to see in echocardiography in case of pulmonary embolism, acute pulmonary embolism. Dilated right side in parasternal long axis view. Dilated right side in four chamber view and compressing the left side. Right ventricle and right ventricle with atrium compressing the left side. And parasternal short axis view, D-shaped left ventricle because of dilated right side compressing and depressing here on the septum inferior vena cava is dilated and they mention two important signs here which uh, very specific to pulmonary embolism and can differentiate between the uh, right ventricular overload of pulmonary embolism and uh, right ventricular over pressure overload of the left side lesion you see here if the if you put the pulsed wave doppler at the right ventricular outflow tract which you can visualize by bar sternal short axis view at the level of great vessels if you put the pulsed wave doubler here at the right ventricular outflow tract and you will assess the flow of a uh, pulmonary artery flow in pulmonary umbilis this flow is the bifid you will see two waves in this flow and at the same time 
the acceleration time of the pulmonary artery flow uh, from baseline here to the big systole this acceleration time is very low it is less than 60 millisecond and at the same time the tricuspid regurg uh, usually in the acute pulmonary embolism it will not be uh, so high because the right ventricle will be weak to generate pressure and generate high pulmonary pressure. So the pulmonary pressure, pulmonary systolic pressure in acute pulmonary embolism will be less than uh, 60 millimeter mercury. And you can see the embolus and you can assess also the tapsy will be low in acute pulmonary embolism, but in subacute lesion, the ventricle will compensate and will hypertrophy it, will increase the muscle mass and can increase the function and the tapsy may be normalized as well as the tissue doppler is subprime of the right ventricle will be also normal. Let us see our patient. Our patient tricuspid regurg is not so much going with acute pulmonary embolism process uh, because uh, it's also uh, only three weeks of uh, complaint and at the same time when we put the pulsed wave doppler here at the outflow tract of the pulmonary artery main pulmonary artery we, you see here bifid pulmonary flow bifid pulmonary flow double pulmonary flow here and when we measure the acceleration time of the uh, pulmonary artery flow from the base here to the big it is 60 millisecond which is too low and this really is very specific for pulmonary embolism because because of pressure uh, in front of the ventricle it will uh, uh, stop the flow uh, when reach the peak it suddenly stop because the increase pressure in front of the uh, right in front of the pulmonary artery because of the pulmonary emboli so it is unique for pulmonary emboli this bifid pulmonary flow with very short acceleration time uh, we usually assess the LVOT VTI to see the stroke volume and it is low here it is uh, normal uh, from 18 to 22 but here LVOT VTI it is only 12 that means it's low going with uh, low uh, preload of the left ventricle because of the increase after load of the right ventricle and obstruction of the flow in front of the right ventricle and there is also very uh, important point here as you see if you ha if you uh, find a patient with dilated right side and with right ventricular pressure overload and the dilated right side compressing left side really in this patient you will see fluctuation if LVOT VTI and this is not should should not be considered as a uh, fluid responsive state because uh, to assess the variability of LVOT VTI as a clue for fluid responsiveness it should have right ventricular function normal if there is abnormal right ventricular function you can assess LVOT VTI variability because already if the right ventricular has pressure overload and strength with both of pressure ventilation this will increase the afterload in front of the right ventricle and this increase in the afterload will decrease the flow uh, and will decrease the LVOT VTI because it will decrease the uh, preload for the left ventricle so uh, because of the afterload problem with right ventricular uh, dilatation and the failure you cannot use the LVOT vari VTI variability as a clue for fluid, sense, uh, fluid responsiveness in this situation. This is one of the precautions to use the pulse pressure variability, LVOT VTI variability, stroke volume variability. You shouldn't use this parameter as fluid responsiveness in case of right heart failure and dilatation. Okay. Uh, the beauty of critical care ultrasound is it is now from head to toe you need to assess your patient not only the uh, focus of the problem but you can go outside to know a lot about your patient disease attention please what's causing pulmonary embolism you should go to the femoral veins the common cause uh, of, DV, the, of DVT uh, which lead to the pulmonary embolism. As you see here, this is the right common femoral. There is very big thrombus here 
inside the uh, right common femoral at the junction of the great saponus and when you fire the color you see feeling defect because very this very big thrombus attention please what is causing the dvt what's causing the dvt is this very big fibroid which is pressing on the iliac uh, vessels and cause this slow flow which lead to uh, dvt and the pulmonary embolism and if you see the left this is the left common femoral there is a slow flow there is slow flow this is a valve in great saponus and this is the common femoral vein and there is very slow flow and this slow flow is uh, precipitating the pulmonary embolism and precipitating a dvt this is the beauty really of critical care ultrasound it is the head to two examination CT pulmonary angio confirmed the presence of the pulmonary uh, emboli at the great the main branches of pulmonary veins. This is the right pulmonary uh, artery branch uh, feeling defect, and this is another feeling defect. And also in the left side there is feeling defect. So uh, to sum up in this uh, very important case and very uh, unique case, pulmonary uh, embolism sometimes happen to occur subacutely over several weeks and in this situation you can expect the function of the right ventricle to be normal and you will see the right ventricular hypertrophy with the dilatation of the right ventricle uh, to know that this is due to pulmonary embolism subacute pulmonary embolism you need to assess the pulmonary artery flow for this double spikes bifid flow and the rapid uh, acceleration time less than 60 millisecond and at the same time you need to go to the uh, to assess for the dvt uh, to be sure that there is uh, a source of pulmonary embolism and to exclude the left side lesion and left side heart failure as a cause of dilated right side you need to assess the left atrial pressure and the diastolic function of the patient. If the solid function is only grade one, that's not going with the left side lesion. Okay? And please, in case of right ventricular dilatation and the failure, don't rely on the LVOT VTI variability as a clue for fluid responsiveness because this is due to the pressure overload of the right ventricle, which will increase by mechanical ventilation and will affect the preload of the left ventricle, not due to the hypovolemia. And thank you a lot and see you in another project, uh, project recently, inshallah. Bye bye.